Bitcoin just changed the world. How exactly? Let me show you. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Nazik Nershia, back from the video. I wanted to show you how Bitcoin has periodically changed the world in the past and how it's changing the world right now at this very moment. So before we begin, I want to send out a financial advisor and you should always do your own due diligence and make sure you're putting part in an investment scheme. Let's get into it. But before we get into the main component of how Bitcoin changed the world during this Ukraine and Russia war, I want to talk about how it changed the world in the past with its creation. So Bitcoin was first introduced in 2008 as a decentralized currency without the need for a centralized bank or any middle people. It can be sent to and from users via the Bitcoin network, a peer-to-peer -peer network in which transactions are authenticated by nodes and recorded on something called a blockchain. This is basically like a search history for a blockchain. It records who has what. The, invest the inventor of Bitcoin remains a bit of a mystery, however. A paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system was posted on 31st October 2008 on a cryptography mailing list with Satoshi Nakamoto as the author. However, Nakamoto has never revealed any personal information about himself, and his identity has never been confirmed. This has led many to believe the name is a pseudonym for one or more creators. In 2009, a year after it was created, Bitcoin was first used after it was released as an open source software when Nakamoto mined the starting block of the first blockchain. This is referred to as a Genesis block, and it contains the first 50 Bitcoins ever created. From there on, Bitcoin continued to be mined by other early contributors until 2010. That's when this programmer named Laszlo Hanyex made the first known commercial transaction using the cryptocurrencies through the purchase of two Papa John's pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoins. So fun fact, the amount of Bitcoin is worth over 300 million as of this writing. And as of me writing the script of this video right now. So since then, Bitcoin has been traded hundreds of millions of times with the earliest major transactions occurring in black markets. The largest of these was Silk Road, a very interesting website, which traded nearly 10 million Bitcoins during its existence. Because of black market use of cryptocurrencies, Regulation emerged from several countries. The People's Bank of China initiated the most impactful re re eh, regulations with three separate actions. In December of 2013, the bank prohibited financial institutions from using Bitcoin. In September 2017, it issued a complete ban on the use of Bitcoin. And in June of 2021, it implemented a crackdown on major cryptocurrency miners. So after each of these instances, the price of Bitcoin halved. In spite of these regulations, however, the price of Bitcoin is still supported and trending upward thanks to institutions and countries allowing the use of cryptocurrency. So the two most recent examples of this can be found through the Tala Circle and Stellar Development Foundation's partnership with Visa, as well as El Salvador's legal legislation to make Bitcoin legal tender. Also, Tesla accepting Bitcoin is another example of this. However, back in like 2008, 2009, people would say that Bitcoin was a fluke. It was a Ponzi scheme. It was a fraud. As Bill Meyer, Meyer had said, Bitcoin is an environment destroying Ponzi scheme. He had said that on April 30th, 2021, people are still saying that. It still gets called volatile, still gets ca called risky, but, Bit but turns out Bitcoin's market cap is over a trillion dollars. So whatever you may say, it's going up and I feel like it still has a long way to go. And it has, and it's reached to the point that Ukraine is accepting Dogecoin and other cryptocurrencies for donations as funding rise to $35 million. This could potentially change the way we help the world with donations and war-torn countries because we are helping them from the comfort of our own home. And that's, that's something that's amazing. Millions of people are joining together and 
helping people from the comfort of their own home, just so that they can have a little selfish input and say that I was a, I was a contribution to this important historical moment. I feel like that's what people are doing right now. And that's what cryptocurrency is helping us do right now. So Ukraine has started to accept Dogecoin and other cryptocurrencies such as Solana as donations towards its military as Russia invasion continues. So the Ukrainian government has raised 35 million, though more than 35,000 crypto donations have been made since the start of the Russian invasion, according to Elliptic, a blockchain analytics company. So cryptocurrencies have become a prominent feature of the war between Russia and Ukraine. It could really change the way that organizations provide humanitarian aid, and Ukraine has expanded the number of cryptocurrencies that it's accepting for donations towards its military in Russia's invasion. So on Wednesday, Mikhailo Fedorov, Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, said people can send Dogecoin as a donation. Dogecoin is a cryptocurrency, as you all might know, that started off as a joke and has been talked up by Tesla founder Elon Musk. It is often dubbed a meme coin, referring to popular internet jokes. Now every meme, not even meme, can support our army and save lives from Russian invaders, Fedorov tweeted. Because Dogecoin actually exceeds Russian ruble in value, and they're starting to accept those because whatever help they can get is necessary. And it doesn't get any worse than this. This is not it. Anonymous people have actually offered Russian soldiers over 50K worth of Bitcoin for each surrendered Russian tank. Oh my God, guys. This is literally amazing. So the Inter Intercontinental Hacker Collective Anonymous will, will reportedly pay $52,000 in Bitcoin for a surrendered tank, one tank. The notorious hacker organization has reportedly offered Russian troops payments in Bitcoin to hand over their tanks. So the Ukrainian side has been trying to stop the Russian invasion, not only by weapons and direct comments, but direct combats, but also striking them digitally. The government will, the Ukrainian government is also going to be creating a IT army. He says that we need, digi we need digital talents. They will be tasked for everyone, and we continue to fight on the cyber front. They breached more than 30 targets, collecting over 1 billion rubles by hacking. Anonymous has conducted several cyber attacks on Russia, and they've collected almost $10 million. And it gets better than this. Ukraine's DAO flag NFT sells for $6.75 million dollars. So the auction of the non-fungible token depicting the Ukraine flag raised 2,258 Ethereum. And who bought it? The Ukraine DAO themselves. So the Ukraine decentralized organization or the Ukraine, the Ukraine DAO, the Ukraine decentralized administration's organization, they actually bought back their own NFT because the highest bidder basically won this. So as news of the fighting in Ukraine be began dominating the airwaves and social media, a group of cri crypto activists and enthusiasts quickly gathered up to support Ukraine. And this is their Ukraine DAO Twitter post. And you can see that their bidding pool is $2,258, sorry, Ethereum, about $6.79 million. So launched launch last month, Ukraine DAO is the brainchild of Alana Shevchenko, a Ukrainian activist living in England. She says that Ukraine DAO came together after she connected with members of the digital artist collector. And she was personally pushing for the using the Ukrainian flag. And this shows a pure gesture of solidarity actions. So why are people doing this? Why do people use Bitcoin. Well, I think that humans all want to be part of something greater. They want to have that little selfish input that they can, they have something on their phone that they can show to their friends like, hey, I was part of this. I helped the world in some way. Humans like having a purpose in some way. So like, hey, I helped the world in some way. And they'll have that little selfish input and then 
to feel great about themselves, that they'll do that. And this could also help other wars in the future. And this could also help poverty around the future. But on the downside, it's going to be harder for them to convert for Rus people in Russia, people living in Russia and fam whose families are not living in Russia. If they send them Bitcoin, it's not going to be much use to them because over there in Russia, PayPal, Square, everything is shut down. So they won't be able to convert Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency to dollars. However, it's good for Ukraine because they are still maybe available. They still might have more resources, payment resources available than in Russia, but still it's going to be more difficult for them to convert Bitcoin to dollars. Only government officials might have the power to do that. But aside from that, I feel like this could really, really change the way we see the world and the way we help the world. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.